Okay, hello everyone. This is Sandra from Journey to Authentic Living and I'm really excited to share with you my good friend and colleague, another personal development coach, Andy Bryan. Hi, Andy. And uh, <laughs> I know <laughs> that seems to be a little bit of a delay here with with everything. So um, yeah, you know, uh, here at Journey to Authentic Living, you know, we're all about transparency and about how to live rewarding and fulfilling lives. And um, it's such a huge topic, you know, in general. And so Andy and I are kind of trying out the sort of um, recorded conversations to bring to you, to bring to not just my community, but also Andy's community, so that we can merge together and begin having some dialogue about sometimes some controversial and taboo subjects in order for us to, to uh, be able to begin some critical thinking. And uh, yeah, so before we uh, begin, Andy, would you like to say something? Yeah, we would like to say something actually. It's been a, it's been a pleasure connecting with you, Sandra, and Journey to Authentic Living. You know, for me, living an authentic life is, is very much uh, living from the pur purity of who you are in terms of, you know, your soul essence, really what enlivens you every day and, and, and really getting to the true core of who you are. Because I, I feel in today's society, society in many ways, it's, it seems like a lost art that we are um, we're not living in our truth. And living in authenticity is, is seems like the, the road less traveled, yet it's the, the most important road that we can ever take. Um, and authenticity really comes from that place of living from that space of truth. And um, it's a pleasure connecting with your work. And, um, enjoy these conversations too. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. And I'm so glad we were able to connect. And for... Those of you who might be curious, actually, Andy and I connected on Instagram. And, um, uh, you know, he's got such wonderful work on his um, part as well. And I think what, what connected us as well, one of the many things, um, is that we go very deep with our inner life, <clears throat> our inner journey. And uh, it's not always comfortable, you know, to do that. Um, but we truly are truth seekers. And uh, as I said to you as, as in my community, um, truth doesn't have a political affiliation. It doesn't have a religion. It doesn't have a color. It's just what it is. And so I realize that it does take bravery to be able to look at that um, because so many times we want confirmation biases. And um, But for true truth seekers, uh, we're not afraid, right? Um, we kind of welcome the mind-shattering uh, beliefs. Okay, so um, for today, uh, we want to open a little bit of a discussion. I was talking to Andy about um, how, you know, when I had just returned from Peru, I had the opportunity to connect with people just in general and the subject of of uh, spirituality uh, came to uh, the discussion. And also here in the United States, I have uh, even some clients sometimes that seem to be a little bit confused um, about the new age, uh, about how they feel confused uh, with all of this information on spirituality, uh, people who claim to be certain things and then and then are not um, therapists even of different modalities that um, uh, are not really in their full integrity and things like that and most of all the theme that I encountered uh, is something that I've been actually talking about for some time and that is the fast food spirituality type of thing and people are getting a little bit tired of that Andy how are you seeing all this? Oh, well, it's a big subject, really. And, um, you know, for me, it goes, it, it goes back to, you know, seeking the truth of the collective as well as seeing the truth within yourself. Um, because noticing the truth within yourself is one thing. Um, but there, there are a lot of people that seem to neglect or deny some, some aspect of truth of, with the collective around us. 
and I, I believe a big part of the new age movement or spirituality is about is about finding truth in in everything at least that's what i believe and um and if we're not seeking the truth in the external world around us then how can we truly seek the truth within ourselves yes um, but yeah i, I mean it, it is a massive subject and and I, i'm very much a truth seeker of the collective and of myself but you know looking at that in terms of the new age movement um i believe when we look at carl Jung's work we look at sigmund freud and, and the ego and, and what the soul encapsulates the ego the self and the shadow you can see the ego as a, the collective ego of all the stuff happening in the world you can also see the ego as what's happening in your mind you know and the conditioning and then obviously you can see uh, the shadow stuff as a shadow that exists within you in the, in the dark, ugly, so-called ugly side of yourself that you don't want to see. Um, been there, done that. <laughs> still, still going through it. <laughs> yeah, well, and you know, I think we all are. I think that's the key point. Um, I'm really glad you brought up Carl Jung's work um, because it is about the shadow. And I think that it, um, people are yeah. um, afraid of that term or the dark side, you know, they think that, I don't know, they'll become like Darth Vader or something like that. Um, but but it, it's not like that, is it? I mean, it's, we have to sort of, if we want to get to our authenticity, there are aspects of ourselves that are hidden, um, consciously or unconscious, and our environment, right, speaks to us and, and points out or indicates. I mean, there are projections, psychological projections that not, might not be accurate towards our person. But definitely, I think that the shadow, right, is, is, you know, to not suppress that and to be able to fully accept who we are, all aspects. And that's part of individuation that Carl Jung would, would talk about as well. Yeah, and I think for the both of us, um, we both know that it's a lifelong journey, um, you know, this path. Definitely. <clears throat> you, know, you know, going back to that shadow stuff, I think, um, I think sometimes when we don't work on our shadow stuff, from my own experience, I, I feel like although, it's, although it is always a part of us, you know, the shadow is always a part of us, if we neglect it to such a degree, then... I believe we um, it's seen as something that's completely separate from us. It's like completely separate, another entity, another body, another being, because we've just disassociated from it so much. And then when we reconnect with it, we think, you know, wow, why do we, why do we hide that part of ourselves? And, and I, I do believe there's light in the shadow anyway. There's always light in the shadow. And I, um, I tend to see the shadow as the, um, you know the ugly truth but the beauty that lives within you exactly because it's you know there's so exactly. much beauty in the shadow and totally yeah. Mm. yeah when i was a practicing buddhist one of the metaphors they always used was the lotus <laughs> the lotus that um it's such a beautiful flower but it it seeds and grows at the same time that's one thing and it also grows in the muddiest of waters right and um you know, there's a lot of, in the new age, um, yeah, in the new age, there's a lot of spiritual bypassing. And Dr. Masterson talks, <clears throat> I think he's the one that coined the term spiritual by bypassing. And you see that, I mean, you can see that in other religions, and it's not, it's not um, exclusive to, um, to the new age, you know, where people are trying to follow rules or try to be a certain way, but um, are not coming into terms um, with their own with their own aspects um, one of the things I can share to give an example for people that are probably not quite sure what that means is you know for me it was um, I guess a, a shadow part of me was that I was afraid of my anger a lot of times I was afraid to display my anger not just because culturally it was unacceptable the culture I was sort of raised in and then of course the religion behind that not that my folks were necessarily religious but it all kind of comes with the territory and so um so i sort of tried to suppress a lot my anger until until i realized that you know by doing that would would only fester inside and would only damage i mean the, you can't hide from from anger and, and anger is not always a bad thing, right? I mean, it, it can really be, it, it has its light 
um, when you know how to utilize it. Um, so that would be an example of maybe a shadow aspect. Um, and, and also I had to learn that if, well, I think it was the consequence of, of, of wanting to live a rewarding, fulfilling life and loving myself more is that there are going to be times where I will probably get pissed. And there are times where I have utilized my anger for, for, or within appropriate settings. I mean, I'm just thinking um, of, of some incidents that happened that, that it was from integrity, you know, things that need to be said. Um, yeah. But you don't have to use foul language. You don't have to insult people. Anger is not equivalent to using bad language, right? 100%. I mean, I, I've, I've, I've got very much the same shadow in that respect. I feel like that's, that's been my crux as well, you know? Um, and, you know, I, I think when we suppress our anger so much, we become so passive in life and passive in a way that we, we don't live it to the, to its fullest, you know? And, um, we become like people please, you know, we, we become not only trying to please ourselves, but trying to please others. And, you know, you may f fall, fall in the category of um, making sure you're never wrong because you don't want to be criticized for it. Do you know what I mean? And it's, it, it's, a, it's a funny thing to be, place to be. But then you realize, because um, I, I always see I always see the anger as sort of, I know, I know we shouldn't categorize it, but probably a masculine emotion, you know, a masculine sort of emotion that comes through because it's, it's expressed as fire and passion, isn't it, in a way? Um, whereas... I don't know. Maybe maybe we shouldn't categorize it at all. But but like the feeling. Well, I'm also of, um, thinking about the feminine. I hate to interrupt you, but interesting that you say that, which could be another subject to talk about, because when we look at some of the Indian goddesses, like Kali, I think is one of them, or when we look at um, even the Greek goddesses, I mean, they were they had their wrath, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's interesting how we do tend to categorize the masculine or the feminine. But I, I know where you're coming from with that. Yeah, because it's usually then, it's with force, right? It's kind of forceful, and I guess that would be more masculine. Yeah, and I didn't, I didn't want to bring this up too much um, because it's sort of aside from the subject, really. But I, I feel it's really important to share it here because, you know, we 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 look at society society is a collective and we've been living in our masculine and you know when, when we've been in a living in a masculine world for so long you know we look at we look at the um feminine movement let's say and this is ju this is just an example of, of what i believe you know i'm a big fan of women's rights you know i'm a big fan of uh, males rights as well i th think equality is is key in all of this but um when it comes to female movement or the feminine movement what i found is that they're um, overexpressing their masculine in a way that it's it's suppressing suppressing the men in society. It, it, it's sort of seen as um, you know women have got to fight back to get their rights, you know? yeah. which I, I do believe it's important for women to have their rights as it is. But but it's all about coming at one together and loving and, and appreciating <clears throat> one another in those moments. You know, it's not it's not not about betterment of either party. It's about loving one another in those moments and uh, appreciating. I definitely. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. That's definitely another subject, right? But um, yeah, as far as going back to sort of this um, new age and um, the therapies that are out there and people just trying to search um, for something, it's 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 yeah. not a it's not fast food, right? It's not like okay, I go one session or two and I'm done. And I've resolved all of my issues and things like that. I mean, personal development is a lifelong journey. And that's what I try to teach my clients and the people who um, are in my community. And I'm sure you as well. And so um, anything there that you're noticing over in England or something in your work in regards to people trying to just sell more of an idea than really coming from integrity? Uh, I'm I've, I've just going through, um, you know, some of our notes here and, um, you know, people being disheartened by the New Age movement, which we which we said we we're going to speak about. You know, honestly, I think that's obviously what you're picking up on there. 
but I, I see, I do see that, you know, I do see, um, you know, I'm disheartened by the movement, if I'm quite honest. Um, and it goes back to the shadow, you know, it goes mm -hmm. back to the shadow because I've been in spiritual communities on Facebook, been in spiritual communities online, you know, whether it's on other social networks. And it seems like the shadow is so neglected that it's not talked about, it's not spoken about. And yet people say, oh, we could just, we should just live in love and light. And you sit there and you think love and light is beautiful. It is. But we can't have love and light without any shadows of, of or, or, you know, paints of grey, you know. And it disheartens me because I see a lot of people in pain. I see a lot of people awakening to who they are. Once they awaken to who they are, I think a natural process of them, which we all go through, is what I speak about in my Soul Pathway stuff, is, um, is that place of self-inquiry. And that place of self-inquiry is sticking within yourself to, know, to finding out what's truth and what's the, the right answer in those moments. And if we deny our show, we can't possibly know what the truth is for ourselves because we're not allow we're not allowing ourselves to even go there. And that is really the truth of that, what that self-inquiry stage is all about. Once we awaken, we go through that place of self-inquiry. Do we deny it? If we choose to deny it, we choose to go back to our old world. Uh, that place of conditioning, that place of ego. And that's not spirituality at all. That's a conditioned world in which we live that's causing us more and more pain and causing, you know, less of us to actually truly wake up to the to the person we really are. You know, so it doesn't dishearten me, I'll be honest, it doesn't dishearten me. It, it upsets me more than anything else. Because people need support, people need help, people need nurture. And if, they, if they're not getting that nurture and support and they're just going for, for a treatment here and there, which is great, they're very good treatments, no doubt. If they're not, if they're not doing the real work, then they're not going to really, they're not going to really transition into that place of sure. Sure. Yeah, you know, I think it's, it's really interesting because you do bring up, there are a lot of people that are hurting and, you know, I did a lot of independent work um, as it was an independent contractor for a healthcare provider, pretty well-known healthcare provider off and on here in the United States. And, um, you know, it was all about the wellness and it's, and, uh, but, you know, even if people had a team of, of folks, you know, they had a, a medical doctor, they had their behavioral coach like myself, and then they had a therapist and they had all that. You know, it's, it's, you know, behavior is the most difficult to change. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Um, uh, it. It is difficult, but I think when we are consistent and we're tenacious and we just steadfast, we just keep on making those little moves um, forward. Um, I don't know. It, <clears throat> it's interesting because a lot of people say that they can do a lot of things. And I, I, I don't know how much the collective is so influenced you know of course we're talking right now about a group of people we're not talking about everyone in personal development i mean we're not the only ones that see uh sometimes the uh negative side of the new age um but yes i i have people that call me up and tell me i've done that i've done this but this doesn't work or what have you and so it's just kind of interesting to, to take note of, of that. Um, and you're right, and I agree with you, is that um, sort of the shadow side or talking about things that are a little bit uncomfortable, um, it, it, we need to talk about that. Each individual, however they define that, needs to, to talk about that. I, I don't engage with Facebook groups or groups in general that, you know, the love and light, like you said, it's like, oh, don't say anything. You know, when I lived in Colorado Springs as well, and I was part of a Reiki organization in the very beginning, this was 10 years ago, uh, you know, you'd be walking on eggshells all the time because you, you couldn't address something in, in a group setting or talk to your colleagues because it's like, oh, don't say that. You know, I remember one time talking to a colleague of mine and using the word uh, bound, healthy boundaries. We were talking about healthy boundaries. And she immediately interrupted me and she put her hand out and she says, you know, this is not 
uh, this is not an appropriate word. This is, you know, you're going to, God knows what attract. So it, 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 it's, to me, it is a little alarming when we're unable to, it's like we don't want to label, but at the same time we need words are made to be able to describe certain things, right? And so um, yeah. when all we do is just concentrate on positive things, then it really, um, the rest goes underground. question for you um that, that popped up in all of this i just uh, lost you. you oh yeah 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 can you hear me okay I, yes still. okay now i can i just lost you for a moment i missed your last statement i'll give you some time here maybe i need to pause it can you hear me, Andy? Ah, there you go. Oh, hi, Sandra. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, I was going to say, I had an interesting uh, question pop up in my mind when you said that, really. Um, like healthy boundaries and, and um, all those things. <laughs> People say that we shouldn't sit in our sadness. We shouldn't sit in our... Um, place of pain we shouldn't sit in our shadow and i believe i believe we shouldn't wallow in it we shouldn't wallow in that place we shouldn't sit in it for too long but my question is why shouldn't we sit in it and embrace it for the moment for what it is so that we can love and accept it um and and go to that space and maybe even stay there for some time so that we can become at peace with it do you not think that's really important for individuals to do? I absolutely agree. I think it's very important to befriend and to be in that space, to feel that. You know, I think we've been indoctrinated um, globally, you know, but especially uh, perhaps in your country and in mine, because I saw something a little bit different when I lived in Italy and I've been, in, I've been to France. And, and the Southern European countries seem to be a little bit different when it comes to the realities of life. But certainly in more the Anglo-Saxon countries, it seems to me, and you can, obviously you're English, so you can tell me. But here in the States, it's like, yeah, it's like, let's not, let's not go down there. I don't wanna go down there or, you know, with yourself or with other people. And we don't allow the space. We don't allow people to grieve here in this. Um, I mean, it's becoming a little bit more um, accept, accepted but you're absolutely right. I think to be able to be in that, um, like you said, not wallow, but at the same time feel that because there is a gift within feeling that. Um, and I don't know what that gift could be. Yeah. Everybody is individual, right? I, yeah, I, I think there is always a gift in it at the end though. And that's, that's self love. I think that's the biggest gift that we can ever can ever get from that place and i don't want to uni universally sort of place it a thing on it but i think from a global perspective i think that's what it is really the self-love of who we are and what we're all about yeah um but yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting because you know when we go through stuff shadow stuff we seem to deny the fact that we, that these this is the pain we've got this is the suffering we're going through so we deny it so much that we we think Oh, um, Thailand's a beautiful and amazing place, let's say, for example. And there's a lot of places in Thailand, you know. I'm going to go to Thailand and it's give me all the answers. And I, and I, I always, often question, I was like, so Thailand's going to give you all the answers. I, I, I'm, I'm amazed um, if only there was a guru in Thailand that could give you all the answers. I, 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 just, keep, I just keep thinking... Let's not search for an external place or go anywhere. Like, even if it's, if it's somewhere, like, somewhere like church or temple, are these places going to give you any answers? Yes, the people in these places can help you find the answers, but nobody can find you, help you find the answers more than you can yourself. And, and you, don't need to, you don't need to leave home. You don't need to go somewhere. You need to go within. That's right. You need to go within. You need to find out what that is for you. And allow yourself to go to that place of darkness because you know 
The reason why I say that is because, again, there, there's people living in conditioning. They've got this pain, they feel that pain, and they think they do whatever they can to skirt around that pain. They go around it and around it. And the ego says, oh, I'm fine. I don't need to, um, I don't need to do this, this healing. I can do it another way. And the soul says, um, the soul says, actually, I need this. I need this healing. Can you allow me to heal? You know? And the ego is constantly saying, no, no, no. And you think, allow yourself to hear what's inside because it's calling out to you. And you need to answer that call, you know. You know. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of people don't answer that call, right? It's kind of part of the hero's journey. And I think that that's why we have all these beautiful metaphors and stories, you know, to try to give us courage as well. I mean, the hero is, doesn't always mean, you know, getting the end prize or what have you. But I do agree that it, it is the inner journey. I mean, this is what it is. I mean, this is why we have soul pathways you have it and i have journey to authentic living and and it's kind of about that but um no absolutely um any any uh suggestion that you would like or that comes into your mind about when you hear uh people out there maybe that might be watching this video um what would your suggestion be when they say to you you know i'm just so fed up with this new age bs stuff and and i feel frustrated and yet i want answers yeah i'd i'd have definitely been there i think we've had conversations about this at times as well um i'd say just look within yourself and find your own peace find your own peace because it doesn't again it doesn't matter what's going on in the world around you you can only do what you can with your environment and uh, either that's the environment inside yourself having that healthy mindset and outlook and um you know try and influence as many people as you can around you to find their own truth as well because that'll be that place of peace you'll find um but do i know all the answers i don't know all the answers to be honest and you know when, when it comes to my coaching and ther uh, work that i do with my soul pathway stuff i actually say that in my coaching i am not going to give you answers because that's not my work what my work is all about i'm going to guide you and support you to help you find the answers within yourself that is really what my work is all about um and it, it's uh, it's it's allowing yourself to to, to find that road less traveled for you and find out what that, that truth is for you what you what you love and desire and, and from that that's um i hope that answers your question <laughs> yeah i know it totally does i like that i think that that's a really good answer and i would um answer that uh as well equally the same and uh by the way you kept on bringing up the road less traveled it's a 1980s book by dr scott peck of course we now use that that phrase but um i read that book when i was probably about 14 years old believe it or not there is a book called the road less traveled and it's an excellent book and unfortunately dr scott peck is no longer alive he wrote a lot of wonderful books um i think he was almost um he, he was unique in his vision and his approach and it's sad that uh that we don't have him anymore i cannot even imagine but he left such great uh, a great legacy for those people, especially Americans who know who Dr. Scott Peck was. Um, so check it out. It's an older book, but it's timeless. It's one of those books that you can just read forever. Um, I'd love to read. I haven't yeah. read it myself. I'd yeah, okay. It's it germane to, to what's happening. <laughs> yeah. There's, but that, I just had to bring that out. But um, Andy, this has been wonderful. You know, I, I don't know if we really touched upon a lot of uh, the uglier sides of, of new age. But um, of course, I always tell people if you're watching this and listening, um, please make suggestions. You can comment below, uh, get a hold of Andy if you have any questions for either of us. You know, we can definitely create another video with something a little bit more specific. But I think we're getting the dialogue going. And, and I think what Andy suggested was, was a good thing. I would suggest the same thing. Nobody can give you anything. You can't, um, you can go to a retreat and, and go to a teacher that is well known. For example, I, I actually know, you know, I'm fond of some teachers out there, but um, I don't look at them as, as a guru. I don't look at them as though they're better than I am. They've just, 
they have such great wisdom. They've been given the opportunity to to uh, share. And uh, but but I think when we get out of the mentality that somebody's going to fix us, you know, we're going to find the gal or, or guy who's just going to fix us. You know, we're going to be well. Then we're kind of on the wrong path, right? Um, so yeah so thank you andy for this i treasure this moment i hope yeah. this video is is going to be well received by others well, and again please do ask questions yeah go ahead well one thing that you added there was really good um that last thing when you said um where you're going um there is no path you know and i, I love that because yeah i, I remember jo joseph I campbell say says um <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean yeah. you've got to follow find oh, yeah. your own path you yeah know? yeah absolutely um, if only i could f remember the quote i can't remember the quote but um um but yeah your your path will will open you know follow your bliss and the universe will open doors where uh, there are only once walls. joseph campbell but, that, that, that's another I, I always love that quote. i but, know it it's yeah funny. it's funny though isn't it it's funny that um it's funny that, that that road does open up for us um, in, in, in beautiful and, and amazing ways, you know, if we just allow ourselves to, to, to look within ourselves, find, us, find our own truth and, and live from that place. Um, again, that road less traveled, beautiful. So. Yeah, it's yeah. absolutely beautiful. <laughs> and I guess we'll end it with that. And, um, you know, just encouraging all of you uh, to live authentically, to seek it out, look, find your inner truth. You, you know what that is and uh, just continue on the path. And I'm sure Andy and I will come together again and have some other recorded conversations. In the meantime, Andy, you and I will always, as always, keep in touch uh, personally. And thank you for experimenting with this because this is kind of the first time and uh, I'll Definitely. be talking to you soon. I don't know if there's any last thing that you would like to add. I mean, one, one last thing that, that we'd like, that I'd like to add for us, I think, um, for the both of us and not just me, but, but we're looking to have these, these uh, raw and authentic conversations, you know, on a frequent basis now, you know, every, well, every so often, not, not gonna be specifically regimented, but, but um, we're gonna have these conversations to help you seek within yourself, to find your own answers, whatever that might be. We're gonna bring up some interesting topics and then we're gonna talk about like the new age movement, what authentic living is all about, or Absolutely. You know, many, many different areas of what it means to live this life. Um, and we're learning as well along the way. So Absolutely. I'm looking forward to these flowing conversations. Yeah, I am too. <laughs> and uh, it's just wonderful to be able to look at things from different angles. All right, Andy, love you. You too. Take care. Take and we'll care. Talk to you again soon. Bye. <laughs>